thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you all hear me? Can I? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, my dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in worldwide today, implantology has uh, helped millions of people uh, who has without tea have to with the advent adjunct of placing their implants intraorally. Now, extraorally also, the implants has been placed as a prosthesis for to correct the dental facial deformities as well as to improve the aesthetic outcomes of patients. So this, as you can see, implant is a very uh, specialized uh, discipline and it is now becoming eventually will be a speciality by itself. Now I've contributed to a small uh, booklet here you can see. Um, it's regarding implants on rehabilitation of resolved bone with implants and if any of you are interested, you can come and see me later. I still find it very interesting even though I published it in 2007 in June. Let me introduce you to the uh, oral specialist healthcare in a hospital sort of setting and the Patients in these type of places, they look for solutions and we are all aware that the responsibility of this patient, uh, all this belongs to the patient. If you can see the slide here, you can see that there is extra tooth in this area for, the, for this patient and you can see the mental foramen coming out next to it. So you must expect that there will be numbness after operation. So in this particular patient, you won't be surprised. It's only that you do not want to have a persistent numbness. You don't mind having just a transient numbness due to retraction. Now we also know that when we put in implants, for instance, uh, sometimes there are insufficient bone and bone graft needs to be placed uh, for the patients. But then you must realize that uh, all these are actually depends on the anatomy of the patient and you must stress to the patient that the responsibility belongs to them and you are actually helping them. Now in the hospital setting, besides our dental procedures and implants, we are also trying to use new materials. This is this location as you can see. We are also using dermis now to cover the mucosa when we remove tumors and uh, these are areas where you can start introducing and helping your patients if it is uh, uh, when the indications are there. And because of the wider scope, you are able to see, for example, blood coming out from the sinus. Uh, um, these are areas that uh, eventually you may see when you are doing implants as well. Now today, we, my topic is on clinical challenges in the management of oral implants. And we have uh, formed the Malaysian Oral Implant Association since September uh, 2004, so it's more than six years. Every practitioner are aware of the uh, implant dentistry carries a risk of complications even with reasonable care of treatment. And you, what we try to do is we try to minimize the retained risk or try to reduce the risk involved. So written informed consent are very important. So what, what is written informed consent? It's just a law that states that you cannot touch the patient uh, only when the patient gives you consent. So you need to explain to the patient regarding the nature, the benefits, risks, and also treatment alternatives. Here you can see with the MDA, we are giving free treatment for diagnosis and treatment in Banda Utama many years ago. Now there are many new things that have been introduced in the market and many modern trends of doing things. And in this competitive market of ours, you find that uh, it creates a lot of pocket of dissatisfaction between the patients as well as the doctors. So you find that uh, different people may have different way of doing things. So uh, this is one of the things that uh, we want to be aware of.
and the most important risk management is to keep proper documentation. So I just want to share with you some of the patient's expectation. You can see in China, long time ago, probably Malaysia is like this as well, where we, we are just treating patients uh, near the roadside, or you know, they, there's a lot of registered dentists. In fact, when I stay in Malacca, I was staying next to a registered dentist. So uh, they do different things, but nowadays, of course, the expectation of patients are entirely different. Generally speaking, patients expect the following. The explanation of the proposed treatment, a reasonable opportunity to obtain answers to their question, they expect you to respect and consider their lack of medical and dental knowledge. They want to be accessible for 24 hours or even 365 days a year. Clear understanding of the financial obligations as treatment progresses and also a complete, honest explanation of any of the complications involved. So you can help your risk uh, management in your clinic by improving your consent. Consent must be written and given realistic expectation of the likely outcome of the treatment. You can also improve by early recognition of the post-operative complications and referral if necessary. Most of the time there is anger and frustration which is compounded by poor patient management, example, not accepting the injury that has been caused. Now, many of our patients, implant patients, they expect uh, to chew for the rest of their life once you put the implant into their mouth. And uh, sometimes this is unrealistic because there's always a risk involved in implant dentistry. So in implant dentistry, Success will depend on careful planning, meticulous surgical technique, and also sound prosthetic management. As you know, implant is an inanimate object, and it depends a lot on a biological response. The modern concept, if I understand, a lot of failures are attributed to the quality and quantity of the bone of the jaw. Maintenance as, is one of the very important factors uh, now that I come up to realize, a lot of patients in Malaysia, for instance, do not come back for maintenance. And actually, that is why we, we sometimes do not get good results. Now, you can see that uh, uh, this is all in four, and after removing it, there are lots of uh, uh, deficits, <coughs> helpless around the implants. So you would like to recall your patient, for example, every three or four months for optimal care, and you may even want to follow by radiographs and do oral prophylaxis. So what are the complications of uh, frequently associated with implants? There you have implant failures, uh, very common altered sensation and nerve injuries. You can get dysesthesia or anesthesia of especially your inferior dental nerve. Infection and bone loss, you have done a lot of bone uh, grafting Maxillary sinus complication, you can have nose bleeding and failures, aesthetic consideration and prosthesis, as well as implant fractures. Now, here just to show, the, show you a lot of uh, uh, diagrams, my slides consist of a lot of uh, uh, diagrams to show it to you. And you can find that this, uh, sometimes you can see failure in the buccal bone. And if you want to remove the implant, it's not that easy to remove but failures do occur due to chronic infection or some other cause of fracture, implant, etc. So let me share my experiences with you for predictable and successful results. This is what uh, I'm always trying to get for my patients. 